Jews. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go, Go out, out to, to all the world, the world and, tell and tell the good, good news. news. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father. So also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, guys, this didn't go over well with the people who listened to Jesus say this because this was very hard to understand. How could Jesus give us his flesh to eat? And what's really strange about this is it's, it's hard. And, and all the people said, this guy's crazy. We're, we're, no gonna, we're no longer going to follow him. And most of his people, most of the people following Jesus left him. And then he turned to Peter and the, 12, uh, the, the, the other apostles and he said, are you going to leave me too? And Peter says, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. It's kind of a strange mystery because God created the world out of nothing. He can certainly change bread and wine into his body and blood. It looks like bread, it tastes like bread, and all the rest. But we believe that Jesus, in some kind of mysterious way, makes it his real presence. It's really there. Now, you guys are kind of young, and there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, but you probably have all played video games, right? And if you play video games, you're moving people around on the screen. It might be basketball, it might be sports, it might be some other kind of video game. But if you ever got out a magnifying glass and went really close to the screen of those video games, you would see that those guys are really just little dots moving around on a screen. They're not really real characters, but it's a computer program that makes it appear as though these characters are moving on the screen. But when you know what's behind the scenes, it's not really characters moving on the screen. It's just kind of little dots of light organized in a certain way. So in other words, if you pay too much attention to the little dots organized on the screen, you can never figure out what's going on in the game. You kind of just have to sit back and relax and follow it and, and take it for what it is. So God is really making himself apparent and real in the things that are behind the immediate things that we see. And that certainly is the case in the Eucharist. In just a couple weeks, some of our children will be making their first Holy Communion. And that first Holy Communion is just a great gift, a great deal. It's also a great mystery. God, I don't know how he does it all, but I believe that he does it all, that he really does do these things. 
In that first reading today, we hear the story of Saul. Do you know who he was? He, was, he became St. Paul. And what happened with Saul is that he uh, believed in God, but he didn't understand how Jesus could be God. And so he was mistaken. He, he believed the wrong things. And so you have a lot of people today that believe the wrong things and they get deceived. Some people think some people are better than others. You know, that they think that just because you're a certain color or speak a certain way that you're somehow superior to other people. And that's not the way it is. God made us all to be equal and we all have our own gift. God made us a little boy or a little girl so that we can grow up and do his mission and do his will in the gifts that he gave us. And that's the beauty of knowing God. God doesn't make mistakes. He created us to be an infinitely valuable, one of a kind masterpiece, which he created for some mission. And the devil's really tricky and crafty at deceiving us, getting us to follow what we think is good, following what we want to feel, which will make us feel good. But oftentimes when we follow that, it leads to, to unhappiness and sadness, either for ourselves or somebody else around us. So the big thing is just to say that little prayer and say, God, let me do whatever you want me to do. Because if we do what God wants, we'll be really happy. The devil tries to trick us into thinking that what we want will make us happy. And that's a lie. Unless we want to do God's will, that's what will make us happy. When I was about your age, a priest told me to pray every day, especially after communion, just, just to say, God, let me do whatever you want me to do. Because if we do what God wants, we'll be really happy. But the devil's tricky, he's crafty, and he tricks a lot of people into doing so many bad things. So many bad things that lead to broken homes, so many bad things that lead to selfishness and, and only concerning about ourselves and what we think will make us happy. But God will help us see the truth as it is, okay? So let us pray that we can understand this great gift of the Eucharist and understand that when we take Jesus, that's really Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, so that we can become what we consume, okay? It's really cool. It's a great mystery that we have to see the reality beyond the appearance. And that's a great gift. And we have that gift through faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Mary and Frank Fahey, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in a special way on this his feast day and his, his patronal feast day of St. George that he may be inspired by all the saints to guide his, his church, guide our church with courage and fidelity to all that's true, good, and beautiful, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for an end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all our students who will be confirmed this night by Bishop Rhodes, that they may be touched by the Spirit and move deeply to be soldiers for Christ, to be able to defend the teaching of the church and do their best to proclaim that good news to everyone they meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear Let us pray that all corruption in the church be uncovered and those and in the world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that they so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all this in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord and that we may all be inspired by the saints like St. George, who, was, who had the courage to fight for what, all that is true, good, and beautiful, we pray to the Lord. And that we may strive always in our own lives to do God's will and never be concerned about our own selfish needs, but the needs of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.